raising the slit lamp up using this right here. Clean with the alcohol pad first. And then we turn on our slit lamp with this uh, knob right here, the power button. And that changes the intensity of the light as well. The lower the intensity, the better in terms of patient comfort. Chin has to be here, forehead needs to be all the way flush against that band here. And you can adjust the height. You want this black line to be uh, parallel with the lateral orbital wall or canthus of the eye. That helps give you the greatest range of motion with your slit lamp here. And so you adjust that with this knob right here. So that'll go up or down and you just want it, the eye to be parallel with this black band right here. And then that, and so this light just provides an area that you can have the patient look at when you're looking at their eye if you want them to look somewhere specific. This is actually a separate light that it's, a, it's, a, it's sort of Hey, how's it going? Back lights, so if you're using the camera, it lights up the whole. It, I, I had a lot of trouble with this. It actually, is, you can see it's lighting up my eye. Huh. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it, when you're using this camera, it works better. I, I've never seen it on a still lamp before. Gotcha. But this just has a little button. All right, so then the patient side's all the way against this band here. And so. To start out with, you can narrow or widen your beam on the light with this knob right here. This can, uh, that makes the beam very narrow uh, and then turning it can widen the beam. So now it's as wide as it can go and now it's as narrow as it can go. And that's useful for looking uh, at the cornea and the thickness of the cornea and looking at the lens and the cataract. And it's also important to look for uh, inflammation. So someone with uveitis, you'd want to turn the light up as bright as it can go. You'd want to magnify it with this knob right here to 16. And you'd want to shorten your beam using this knob right here. And I will lengthen the beam. There we go. And shorten the beam. And that's important for measuring like a corneal ulcer, a corneal infection. And it's also important to look for inflammation in the eye. You want this beam as short and relatively fat. And you magnify to 16 here. And then you can focus in and out to look for uh, microscopic cells in the anterior chamber to look for uveitis or a hyphema uh, or inflammation in the eye. So you, you see your cell on flare best with, just like this with a very small very short fat beam fat beam okay and then you look in between the two lights here and you focus back and forth with this knob uh, to get these cells in focus in the anterior chamber look back at the eye we want to mag out and lengthen our beam and one important thing for someone with uh, a suspected corneal laceration or a cut uh, you would perform the Seidel test, which is putting a drop of fluorescein in the eye, uh, turning on this blue light by flipping this knob here, and then assessing for a black uh, waterfall type appearance through the yellow dye that would indicate that the eye is leaking uh, from a laceration. And then the magnification to get closer, 16, you really don't need to go to 40. Uh, 16 is usually pretty adequate to look for cell and flare and inflammation and hyphema. And then 10 is usually your baseline of how you just want to look at the eye. Standard. Yeah, I find that the higher the magnification, the more difficult it is to work with instruments because it, it, the depth of field is a lot less. Definitely. <laughs> you know, the higher the magnification, and, and you can also. You know, see yourself shaking sometimes. <laughs> uh, also, this locks it down so that it won't move. I don't know if you showed that. Correct. So when you finish, lock it back up so it won't roll around. This knob right here. And uh, you should decide, you want to go over how to focus to your own doctor sure. number yeah. on the lens? Yeah. I mean, the same thing we did with microscopes in second year of medicine. Exactly. So, but if you don't remember that, then you know how you would focus to to decide uh, what your settings are going to be because you're going to set it to the same thing every time and the same with interpupillary distance. Exactly. So here you can change your 
your IPD or, or your interpupillary distance to be perfect for your eyes um, and the way that, you know, you have the patient sit here. And if it's too narrow, you can really only see out of one eyepiece, but then you want to widen it out and you can see much clearer. And then also, uh, you know, if you, if you do not wear corrective glasses or contacts at all, you just want these set at zero right here. Uh, if you remove your glasses and you know what your prescription is, then you can adjust these accordingly to your prescription. But with your glasses on, or if you do not require glasses, just leave it at zero right here. If you don't know what your prescription is, you can just manually change it till it, it Clears focuses. Clears correct. Yeah. yeah, if you have the patient sit here, uh, everything will be out of focus because the, the lamp is too far away. And so you just wanna, or it could be too close. So you just want to gradually pull back or go forward until the eye comes into focus. And then after that, you can go up or down and uh, move side to side as well. What are the hygiene steps with these? I mean, obviously, we are seeing patients with conjunctivitis and adenovirus and, and yeah, so, so any, forth. Any conjunctivitis patient, you definitely want to wipe this down with... Uh, with a, like a bleach wipe and make sure that it's nice and clean all over the headband and the chin. And, you know, if you're touching the patient without gloves, uh, then obviously you want to clean everything that you're touching. There are a lot of other features on here, but basically the only ones we need are to, the intensity of the beam, mm -hmm. the width and height of the beam. Mm -hmm and uh, the color of the beam, and the correct. only colors we're going to use are white, blue, and blue. And white. correct, um, yes. I guess green is supposed to Green can look blood. at the retina yeah. um, for certain details. It can make a macular pucker look more detailed, okay. but it's really not necessary. Okay.